Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. Anybody that do an entry? Okay. Hey, pay attention down there. <laughs> Boy, he takes a day off, you know. He's just, I'm telling you. <laughs> but to, uh, right. Thanks, folks, for coming. Changes to the agenda. Yes, we do have some um, Memorial County Planning Commission appointments that we have to approve. We got to technically do that. Um, do we have any comments from the public, or are you here for a specific topic? A specific topic? Yep, well, I thought so. Okay. I got one. You got one? Uh, yeah. To reference last week's meeting, um, I'd like to know why we received an email telling us it was just the two chiefs that were supposed to attend that meeting. It was an open public meeting. Well, it, we it wasn't attended the meeting until. Um, Wait, the, so just for the record, so what the, are we talking about? The fire, <laughs> the, 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 the fire meeting. The fire meeting, okay. Yeah. When they started, we just wanted a preliminary meeting uh, between the fire chiefs and stuff to just get an outline of what we want, where we're going to go and stuff. But then with, because uh, I wasn't going to be on the board, it was going to be Roger from North Hyde and, and Marshall Rowley. And once I was on the board, it made the three select board members, so it made it a public meeting. So why did you request that the day before the meeting that it was still for just the chiefs when it was a public meeting at that point? Because that's the way I wanted it set up. You can and, you and, you and can still request the people that are there. Other people can come, but it doesn't mean you get to participate. Right. Or or say well, anything. Can't tell us that we can't come, like you did. I, I didn't tell you you couldn't come. I didn't tell nobody. The email that Ron sent the chief said that you only wanted the two chiefs and the rest of the officers didn't need to come to it. I did, that's why I wanted it set up. But well, you didn't need come? to, that means that's not you. I mean, I can understand how you can take that way, but it's not. When it's a public um, meeting, we're all allowed. I, I don't, mm -hmm. I mean, I haven't seen that. I think that's right. But saying you don't need to come is not telling you that you cannot come. It's saying that you're not required to be there. That's, I mean, I think that's all that's saying well, that was all the intention right. so did you go no i didn't i fell on the email because that's why i'm here tonight so i gotcha okay because i don't feel it's right and another thing i'm going to bring up to your board i don't think roger audette should be making decisions on fire department things the way he has a grudge against the two departments <laughs> i think it's conflict of interest who, who says that i have a grudge just the way you act towards us. Huh? Huh? Just the way you okay, act wait, towards us. Okay, wait, all right, let's stop. <laughs> okay. Um, I appreciate that input. The, the group is um, intentionally large enough so that no individual is going to be making decisions. It's, going to, it's a group process, and people will have their opportunity, including folks that aren't on, on the group, to put in their input, including if you think that somebody is biased and they shouldn't be there. But if, again, on the group, we've got what, five, six, how many people on the committee? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Right, so with, so with six people, that's plenty of, that's plenty of opinion to be <laughs> interesting to see if they can get to a conclusion, actually. suggestion to the committee when you guys discuss things before you guys make a decision just make sure you have your facts correct please well the chiefs have been here uh -huh. the chiefs have been here They've right so facts. i'm just saying right. because there's times that you guys have been given information and it's not correct information correct which is why this subgroup has been formed because that's what we definitely want to get to is making making the decisions that we make on the facts and realizing that um, on, on many issues there are, there are more than two sides, there are a number of sides. And they will, those, those meetings in the future, and if it, and again, saying that you don't need to come doesn't mean that you can't come, and I'm, I'm sorry you interpreted it that way because you, you should have gone, because anything like that is, 
it's a public meeting anyway, and certainly with three members of the select board on it, right. it's public. Okay. So you definitely want to feel free to go. And then the last thing is seeing you guys are after the fire department's on saving money. Can I ask you? Lord, on everybody for saving money. <laughs> you're not you're not being discriminated okay. against. Well, <laughs> okay. Finish, yeah. So the department has operated over a hundred years with their bylaws the way they have been. All the other towns around here operate the same exact way with bylaws, not personnel policies from the town. You guys have already spent $1,600 on attorney fees that started back in August 2016, and our bylaws still aren't up to date where we've asked. Well, I think, Ron, you can address that, right? Haven't you talked with the chief about? Yeah, we're in the process yeah. of working on He's that. Working on it. Right. But what I'm saying is you guys are asking us, but you guys are spending all this money on attorney fees at 230 bucks an hour. Why did you even have to touch it? Why, didn't, why couldn't you just leave the bylaws as it is? Because Morsel does, Johnson, all the other towns around here operate under bylaws, not town policies. Um, because we had some recommendations uh, from several sources, not just legal, that those really weren't sufficient and we had had some issues that it was clear they weren't sufficient and that we needed to have folks be underneath town policies so that when different issues arise there can be a clear line of authority as to who's responsible and who needs to do what and who's accountable. Did that come from Vermont League of Cities and Towns? League of Cities and Towns and our own lawyer and talking with another town. Thank you. Yep. Yep. No, we don't um, we don't like to spend money on lawyers unless we feel it's really necessary and we do it when we have concerns about the liability that the town could confront in certain situations. And we were put in a couple of situations where the town could have been liable. But it just seems like you guys are trying to micromanage the fire That's what it seems. Yeah. And um, I will tell you as chair of the board, what I'm trying to do is get it, people out of micromanaging the folks that are, uh, that are whether, whether it's the town, whether it's upstairs, whether it's the fire department, whether it's emergency management. Right. Because that's my thing, because there's only two that sit on the board that has past fire department experience. So how can, you know, that's the thing, why don't you just let the chief of that department run it, you know? Well, I'll, I'll give you an answer for that because part of that would be for, for me, you know, always admitting that I don't know anything about it, that's making an assumption that the chief knows what they're doing. And why should I make that assumption? I mean, I don't have any reason to assume that they aren't doing a good job, right. but I don't have any reason to assume that they are doing a good job. And then several things can come up as questions mm, that leave us mm -hmm. with a board as some questions, which led us to maybe we need to be looking at some of these things, which doesn't mean that both chiefs aren't doing a lot of good things, but it's just like town government has changed, fire departments have changed, emergency management has changed, ambulances have changed, the world changes, and we're just, we're just trying to make sure that people in positions of authority um, are, and they also know what their responsibilities are. And the last thing that I have is there's rumor of you board, Eddie's getting close to retirement eventually within a few years or so. I'm his assistant chief. I've been serving this town for 25 years now in that department. And there's rumor because the select board, the state statute states, the legislative board has to approve the fire chief, correct? Yes. You got I, believe that's true. I think that's yes, true, but I'm, I'm not right. I don't remember the state statute. Right, okay. Government. Yep. But it's correct. And there's rumor flowing around town that this board right now, if Webster got done tomorrow, you guys would not appoint me as the chief lead. Well, I can tell you one thing. It's a small community. If you believe every rumor <laughs> that goes say around that's right. here, 
I never heard it here. Here, well, well, the reason why I'm asking. Well, but it's it's better to come when you hear a rumor. I okay. would prefer that well, people come because there's a rumor right now that I'm leaving the select board too, and I'm unaware of the fact unless these four know something that I don't that I'm leaving the select board. So the reason why I'm asking you is because when the foreman's position opened up at the highway garage, it was open to internal employees only. And as me classified out on the fire department, I'm an internal employee. I was the only one that applied for that position. I didn't get an interview. They opened it to the public twice, and I still didn't get a job interview. I had 14 years experience in the highway department, and I never got an interview out of any of the positions. <coughs> Discrimination? I just, I don't, I don't. I don't know what. I mean, I don't have any information. I don't know anything you're, about that, but I can look at it. The only two that weren't on the board at that time. The other three were. All right. Well, we got an excuse, but we ought to. You know, I mean, so I, I so I have no idea. Chief right. Thing right. Up to you right. Right now, because are you qualified for fire chief? Absolutely. Well, then you'll be in the running, I would guess. But I don't think the select board can forecast your future for you. And they're not going to do it at a public meeting. No, but I, I, I can appreciate backwards. with his. I know he's grilling you on a past no. decision. Well, I'm, which is all done under the. It, it, it's true that was done differently, but I can appreciate why he feels the way he is feeling when you hear rumors that well he wouldn't be we we wouldn't appoint him. I can appreciate that, and I would much rather that someone come and talk to us about it than the eternal rumor mill that goes around out there. So first of all, I appreciate you coming in and bringing your concerns because I think that's much more constructive. I can absolutely guarantee you that there has been no conversation about. Ed retiring, who would replace him or any of that thought? I am absolutely certain of that part. Well, that's why I'm here. Sure. No. Nope. No. Nope. Yep. Uh, nope. I just I heard a rumor it. tonight. Uh, Ed's retiring. Well, that was the first time. <laughs> I haven't heard it yet. Well, you just did. Well, well we're all yeah. getting old enough, so when we start talking about retirement, it's not a surprise, right? But no, I I, I appreciate you coming in and 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 um and I don't I don't know about. The, past events I mean the people that were here we can we can um, we can talk about it but again I've got no what no, and what's that's done's done it's like right. okay but n knowing that and your experience um, I, I again it's that's always helpful to have more information so I I appreciate that Thank you. anything else no nope. Keep them all shut down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you didn't cause any damage at all. As I say, and I would, and I know we all feel we'd much rather if people are upset about something to have people come in and talk to us about it instead of the eternal rumor mill. As I say, when two people in a row asked me if I was leaving the board, I thought maybe there's something you, you guys want to tell me. <laughs> Just like, well, okay, well, I missed that part, but you never know. They say small towns. Okay. <coughs> Nims, how are you, Nims? Oh, well, how are you? We're <laughs> good. Uh, we sent Ron a yeah. copy of our annual contract, which the funding was approved at town meeting, I believe. Yep. 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 And so I have our master copy just to be signed, if you would like. Um, I have that signed by our five towns, and then we'll send you a copy of the Okay. Paper. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same contract it's the same. As prior years? Yeah. Just different money, Just different money. right. Next year, I have a question. How come Go, gonna get cheaper? How come we don't get together with the liaisons of the, of the towns anymore? Because we either had nobody or one person show up. For the well, usually just at least years. three. I used to go, Ricky Morin went, and the fellow from uh, Belvedere or Waterville used to go. Everybody stopped except for you. Huh. And that's why, that's why we come to, if you would like to. No. Um, we're willing, but. I yeah, was just wondering, that's all. That, that's the reason we did that, and that was changed a year or two ago that we meet with the towns 
twice, at least twice a year, and then as we need or whether at your request. Okay. That's more productive use of people's time today. Yeah, so you yeah, plenty then, of meetings. Please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're pretty well staffed. Very well staffed presently. Yep. We're getting actually we're getting a good backlog of people because as we've expanded, um, we're finding that people like to work with services that are busy. Mm -hmm. And we are incredibly busy with uh, what five new towns we got, five or six new towns we have. Wow. And oh really? We're working on having people work back and forth with each other. It's working out very well. So in this future, in the future, there will be more expansion from the way it looks as well. Hmm. That's our small services are very, it's difficult to run our yeah. small services. Yeah. It doesn't really matter what it's in. Exactly. You just, yeah. Yep. Yeah. You got to, you got to get to some size. Yep. You just got to get to a bigger size, like it or not. You have the original there, you said? I do. Yeah. That's not around it. Have a vote to sign. Right. Anybody have any questions? As I say, I thought. Make a motion to sign uh, NEMS um, one more agreement that was voted at town meeting. Mm. Got a second? Okay. Any conversation about it? All set? Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Thank you, sir. I've started dating things 1920 as opposed to 2019, which is. Oh, well, it happens as we get older here. <clears throat> okay, the Bow Cash Water Supply Inspection Update. Uh, Keith is here. I see Keith. Oh, hey, Keith. Town Health Officer Keith Elder. Yep. And uh, the Bocash family is here. Uh, I think I'll just let Keith take over a little summary of what you've been up to over the last several months. Sure. Um, yeah, we were, the town was, was approached by the uh, family, um, I guess it was, uh, what, November, late November, December, um, regarding a uh, extremely high sodium content. Um, in uh, the homeowner's uh, water, it's a, uh, a shallow, well, it's a spring with a couple of tiles, I guess, that's uh, very near the road. Um, in times past, when it was put in, it was not near the road, but as the road moved with, uh, over time, it, uh, it now is very close. And I, I believe uh, a year or so ago, there was some road work done that Kind of changed some of the drainage uh, on the road. So, uh, what had been a, a very good spring, a good source of water for the family for well, 50 years or so, uh, all of a sudden, uh, Mrs. Bogash uh, noticed her uh, all of her glasses were uh, had sort of a glaze on them, mm -hmm. and uh, which turned out to be salt. And uh, this was in they had done a, a test. Uh, in late November, I believe, uh, and um, which showed very, very high sodium levels, and that prompted them to, to contact the town. So I, I've been uh, involved with that since shortly after that time, and over the uh, over the next few months, uh, the town has done a few uh, water tests looking for sodium and chloride. Um, most recently. It was uh, 
we, again, we were trying to see if we could replicate that, that incident, and, and we never could, even um, after, I think it was, well, it was in later March, and uh, uh, still high snow banks, but it happened to be a really good couple of days of, of melt, so I thought that might be a good opportunity mm -hmm. to see if there would be some, uh, some more of the salt getting in there. And didn't. I mean, the water, the three water tests that, that we had done were all uh, very reasonable, quite low sodium. Um, but that, still, there was that earlier test before the snow banks, uh, after there had been some salting done, which was very concerning for Mrs. Bocash, especially given she. she when the ice cubes tasted like salt. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's that's high sodium. Yuck. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and of course with. Uh, on a low sodium uh, regimen, uh, it's extremely important for her to avoid that. At any rate, um, so we've been involved in doing uh, water tests uh, over the, the cold months and uh, waited for it to, to melt so we could actually get in there and take a look at it, uh, which we did uh, oh, two, three weeks ago. Uh, and there were some, uh, some areas that we thought that, that perhaps the town could could mitigate the, some of the problem with uh, moving the drainage, moving it so that, that there's a drainage, a burn that affects where the drainage is, and by moving that up a short ways uh, it, with the uh, homeowners uh, or landowners' permission, we thought that would mitigate some of it. It would get the any drainage from the road would be going in a different direction than where the well is, and it would be just a very, very inexpensive, uh, a cheap fix for us. And uh, in addition, we, we noticed there were some incursions from roots between one of the tiles, and that kind of explained maybe the root in from the, the groundwater, how it was getting in so readily. But uh, that uh, kind of sums it up to date. So when was the last water test? Um, it was late March. Late March, okay. And as I said, it was after a couple of days of, of good thaw when we thought uh, you know, this might, we might catch it. But uh, as I say, it didn't. Uh, that sodium test was, as all three of them were, were all within a reasonable, uh, reasonable amount of sodium in the water. Now you're saying uh, change of water flow? Would, would that be on the Bocash's land? That well, they would, uh, uh, by putting us, uh, I mean, a very small berm up, uh, what would we say, 20 feet or so, a short ways up, and then a little berm uh, that would go onto her property um, a short ways. It would just direct it uh, instead of the, the uh, sort of the, the ground where it goes away right to her well, it would it would move that flow in a whole different direction. Now, now the other direction is in our right away, Dave. What's that? It would be in our right away. Yeah, but, but would the flow affect anybody else downstream? No. There's no other loss. Yeah. I think I don't know this. This is just what I surmise. It's never happened. They do have a little bit of issue with fixing the tiles. But by using so much salt in early October, which I'm sure Roman did too, to get the snow off the road before the ground even froze, we used quite a bit of material up through there. And I'm wondering, because of the ground not being froze, no snow, that whether when we did get rain, stormy weather, that salt went down for the first time maybe and uh, polluted the, the spring. And you're saying but building this burn would eliminate that? Yes, well that and, and also sealing the, the tile. That right, because that they've got a incursion. Right. So it would, it would be, you know, both both would uh, should be done but the part that the town would have would be that small burn that's yep. redirecting. And, and I'm talking about very small well, if it's something we're causing, we're liable to, to take care well, of that's it. that's right, I'll fix it. And yeah. I, I, yeah. Uh, again, it's just a guess, but that before the ground was frozen and then with a crack in the tile, because that's the having a well ourselves. Well, <laughs> you know, sure, that would get in. Usually we don't, 
you know, the ground's frozen, so you're getting a different runoff I pattern went, and everything went up else. A couple times and looked at it, and I just went up last Friday and uh, took a look at it. Um, I didn't go out down to the spring, but where we could divert the water flow coming off. So it's a lot of groundwater going that way. Yeah, yeah, and just okay. yeah. make a berm to get it away right. from the spring. Well, I have no problem with doing that. Right. What would you guys folks like to add? <clears throat> you will be out of out of your road right away a little bit to get the water to run, so it will well dissipate on the backside of the property. But it's your property. But it's her property. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right now, they've left a burn, a small burn on the on the shoulder, from above the spring to below the spring. This water's coming. You can see if you go up there and look, you can see where the water running off the road above this burn. And going it's still down coming the around. Bank, and there's a natural flow for it to run right to the spring. Is that something Mark can do with the backhoe? Yeah. And I just proposed that. I thought would be the easiest way to fix that is continue that small burn that you've got on the side of the road right now. Up. I didn't measure it. I'm thinking 20 feet, 25 feet. Yeah. Yeah. That would get it up to a point where you can make this water bar out onto her property and get it to run out and then down over and dissipate on the backside yeah. away from the spring and the, the house trail. I have no problem with that. No, I certainly not. No, really. That appears to be the easiest and the cheapest way to fix it to me. Not sure if you want to. Well, it's hard for me to, you know, I mean, this, I didn't go out and look at it. But I guess, I guess I would have no, I mean, you have to do something to get that water away from the air and turn it Yeah, right. Sounds yeah. like a pretty simple solution. So. Uh, I just, I'd rather be looking at it myself to see what the decisions are to run down the road. I mean, where is it going to run? You want to run across their dooryard after it leaves? Yeah, no. No, well, it's got it's got it's head towards the, the, head toward the fishing game, do not it? Yeah, yeah, that goes right down there. And, and the, um, apparently, uh, she had never had this problem before. Uh, I think there might have been some, some drainage work done on the road a year or so ago. And uh, that seemed to precipitate this because that, that was not an issue in the past. But um, mm -hmm. so at any rate, 50 years or so of good water, she wants to get her good water back. Yeah, and have to get a, another seems water. quite reasonable. When, whenever they paid that, which I wasn't on the board, I don't know, maybe you guys know when they. But it's been paid now for five years. Okay. So they put the crown back into the one they paid. Yeah. So, but before the road all sloped on the opposite side of the road. Ah. So we wouldn't have that problem. Okay. And they widened the road about 18 years ago. They widened it was with all the pits being used up there. <coughs> all the trucks are going out way as for Howard put in that short cut <coughs> on the 15. And the town pit, Howard's pit, the uh, Fernland pit, and the they got pit. the road, you know, yeah. so they widened yeah. the road. And, but that was a long time ago. But when they changed, when they paid it, that's when the water started running like it should be. How long would y'all that going to be for the boys to go up there? All right. Well, Doing a day. Oh, less than that. Morning. Hour, hour yeah, and hour yeah. and Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I would be more glad to go for only two. Yeah. I just don't know what it's going to create for more so, that's all. Well, so, we don't care about that. No, it's not. It's <laughs> going to run down towards the fish more so line. No, run right down. No. Run right down. Right down the swamp. Right down the fish. Go over and down over yes. the bank before it yeah. gets to more so. Above their house. By all means, go up and take a look at it. So yeah, you know, but so you know what's going on. Yeah. If you if you take a look at it, you'll you'll see exactly what we're talking about. So you're you're more up to cut it off up towards that little place, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, and, and we're talking like 25 feet. It's not much not much further on, but then it would just go into a, an area that's already <coughs> swampy, but it will be different uh, and definitely not be 
affecting her well. So there's a big, big ditch down, big bank down over the yes. over there. Yeah, yeah. Way, way, way over there. there. That's more into the swamp there. Okay. 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 Yeah. I, I mean, I just sometimes like to look at. It. Sure. Yeah. No, there's not, not any problem with that. So. We will go with the assumption that that's the plan that we're gonna that we're going to follow, unless they go up and look at it again and think there's something wrong with it. In that case, they'll talk to you. But I don't I don't see that happening. I mean, it seems it seems like a really easy fix. Yeah, Wright might be in More touch with you to look at. Sure, sure. Whenever, you know, whenever you want to go. Well, this week is definitely. So we're all on the same page. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking it was going to run down towards her dooryard. No, no. Well, that's already happened. That's right now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's, right. that's what we're trying to stop. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there has, I understand there has been some problems with even eroding the uh, end of the driveway, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So since the late, that latest road work was done. Yeah, came right down and washed. Yeah. And yeah. it did do some repairs, right? <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. Does that work for everybody? Yeah, if you want to give me a call, yeah. you want to be at the fair. Um, I'd be more available like Saturday morning. Would that work for you guys? Yeah. Or, or for me, what time? Daylight. Daylight. <laughs> 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 um, that's, that's right. Let's right. say somewhere around 8, 9, 8. 8 o'clock? Yeah. Would that work? Yeah. Yeah. Would that work for you? Yeah. Okay. Saturday morning. Super. Okay. Maybe that takes care of that. Well, thank you. Well, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you bet. Um, the public information meeting on the sinkhole project, West Main Street. Must be is that you? No, <laughs> <is> there. <laughs> I was wondering where I was going to set this up. But there you go. Gone, I, was I, I was going to say that's right. Yeah. They're going to do some work on their spring tile. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. track. That's not the thing as well. You, you might want to move that over because you've put it right in front of the camera, which is. Well, that's going to cover me. You're going to be there on the side, see? I'm to, <laughs> or put it in front of Dave, right? What's that? That's great. The back and talk in the. Is that getting worse, that single? I'm sorry? I don't think so. I haven't received any calls. Staying right where it was. He's pretty good about calling when there's a change. Yeah, he does. <laughs> As the hole gets bigger, yeah. right. Well, thanks for having me tonight. Um, this is kind of a status update on this project. Um, give a, a brief review of what we've done, what the project is, and then uh, see if we have any questions or questions. Okay. About it. Um, this is actually four projects, two different okay. funding sources. Uh, and the first part of it is the realignment of Johnson Street Extension and Main Street. Um, and that project has been around for ever. Long time. <laughs> uh, and it's a surface it's a surface project. There really is no drainage involved in it. It's really uh, new Portland cement, concrete, sidewalks, vertical granite curbing pivot markings, and what it does do is it creates a stop condition on West Main, and, and it further identifies that the through road is Johnson Street extension to Main Street. Um, that's the first part, the very first part, of it. that's its own funding source. The second part is Johnson Street extension, uh, and what started that whole project was a sinkhole in this gentleman's driveway, where, um, it was, there was land disappearing for no reason. Um, we investigated it was impressive. That. What's that? It was impressive. Yeah. We <laughs> investigated that and found that, that it was the old 8-inch clay tile pipe was broken there. 
um, but couldn't find the outlet to where that was. Mark finally went way down the ravine and found where that eight inch clay tile pipe had broken again and water was just rushing out of it. Um, we tried to get a camera in up at this catch basin here, put a camera down to see where it broke and what's going on with it. But because of the way those fittings are, were put together a hundred and some odd years ago, you can't get a camera in there. So the thought was that we're going to abandon that. Because we really need to try to fix clay pipe as you get near it, it's done. That's storm water? Storm water. Well, yeah. it was originally combined sanitary and storm water back a hundred years ago or so. <laughs> uh, so we're going to intercept that line right up here at, at Main Street, put a new manhole in there with a fitting on it, abandon the 8-inch uh, yep. pipe going all the way down, and put in a new 18-inch pipe with five catch bases on, on both sides of the road going down. We're widening the road to 28 feet, now it's like 24 or 25, something like that. Vertical current curving on both sides to keep the water in the road and in the catch basins. On the back side of the vertical granite curving, there'll be a ditch. It'll take care of the water before it gets to the road. It also allows more room for growing snow. Because right now, there isn't any room for it. That outlet, now here's the sort where the uh, uh, sinkhole was. Close to where that sinkhole is, we're going to put a swirl separator. And a swirl separator is a device kind of like a manhole, except mechanically, it's able to uh, clean out the fines greater than a manhole would. And that's going to outlet into the ravine with a stone line ditch. And he'll get a new culvert across there, too. You're going to have to pump that soil separator out. You're going to have to, well, you have to do the catch basins, too. The catch basins all have 18 inch sumps, but they should be cleaned out every year. But with this system, we're only taking water from the road, we're not taking it from from adjoining properties because we have that grand curving ditch on the back side. You got you got cut into that bank? We are. This bank, and I'll talk about that in a minute right away, but we met with him a couple times. Uh, we do have to cut this bank back. It's either cut the bank back or put up a retaining wall. And the retaining wall is expensive there. So we're gonna cut that bank back to a three on one slope. It's like two on one half, but three on one slope. He's in favor of it because he has no sight distance, vertical or horizontal, coming out of his driveway. So I, I think that'll make it happen. He's, I think it'll be fun with it. Now you can buy it for that uh, uh, manhole there, but we've got a grinder in our... Swimmer. What's the cost of maintenance on that every year? Just starting to pump it out or something? That would be, you know... That is it just pumping out, or is there maintenance actually no, has to be done? So, so we put one in, in uh, Hardwick. Main Street okay. in Hardwick mm -hmm. two years ago, and uh, really, they'd be a good resource. We did basically the same thing. <coughs> we catch patients, swirl separator at the end before it goes in the oil. Um, I can tell you that this has a much deeper sump than the catch basins do. Too. Okay, that's the second question. Now, when you cross the road, you're gonna put it into under that under the road culvert and send it. Do what? Send the water to where? So we're collecting the water with two catch bases. It's coming down this way. When it hits you. On this side? No, when, when, at the end. Your last, your last manhole That's on Route 100 point. side. This one? You are closest, at the bottom of the map is, is the top of the hill. Mm -hmm. That's right. Right, we're going but, out to the... But you're going to shoot it this across water. the road? Yeah, this, no, no, not across the road. This water is... But is, is going to be directed to the swirl separator and then to this ditch. That's the culvert that goes across now. Okay, no. And then down to the ravine. Okay. It's, it's not doing, we're not really changing a lot. We're, 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 we're defining where it's going to go and treating it. Have, have you happened to see that runoff in the heavy rain? I've seen the evidence afterwards. It, it's impressive. It is. It yeah. really is. That yeah. that is a lot because it's it's like all of Main Street is from like the courthouse on down, yeah. just comes pouring down that road. Yeah, and and considering the age and the size of that pipe, it's amazing that something like this didn't happen sooner. Right. Yeah. In this. Uh, that's really the last project. So, so. This is the ravine, and 
in the beginning of the ravine where we're going to swirl separator is going to outlet into it really is not in bad shape. It's flat, it's vegetated, it's doing what it's supposed to do. But below the ravine, or below that area where the old 8 inch pipe broke, is where the, the erosion really started. So we're going to start the, the, the restoration in the, in the ravine at that point and bring it all the way down to that 30 inch cover that crosses West Bay. So we're actually we're going to go in there, we're going to reshape the stream bed. It's not really stream, it's intermittent water. Right, yeah. But we're going to reshape that back to what it, what it should be, two on one slopes on the side, fabric and stone, um, all the way down to this culvert here. Currently we have a uh, sign off from the state wetlands office, a sign off from the state uh, stream alteration engineer, and a core engineer's permit to do that work in here. Okay? We'll leave right away. I'll, at the end, I'll talk about it right away. Um, and so, the last one is are the ditches on West Main. And um, we're not changing the roadbed, the grade. We're basically just cleaning out the ditches on both sides, enlarging the ditches, putting fabric down in stone. Um, all the way down to the rail trail, we're going to make sure that that water goes that way. And then we're going to ditch just a little bit on this side here to make sure that water goes that way the way it was intended to go. Um, and that should help. What, what we are also doing though, too. I thought they just did that two, three years ago, four years ago. Not down by Mike Murphy's old place. Right? They work on it every year. Yeah. Unless it's really sandy soil there. Yeah, so yeah it but they, 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 they just put in all new main holes and stuff down through there. No. Within the last three, four years, should they be? Uh, put them down through. Not on west, we're on West Main on the hill down to the rail trail, way yeah. west. Yeah. Down by Trudell's house? Yeah. The oh. Lilies. Okay. You're talking about Depot Street? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We're up, opposite end. So the other thing that we're doing with, with West Main is uh, right that 30 inch culvert crosses the road. I don't know if you take a look at the drop off there. Yeah. We're going to put a guardrail around that. Okay. Just to Yep. Time to do it. Um, and then they'll be ditching on this side also, almost up to about the pavement ends right here. But right down from that culvert, we'll ditch on this side and then hop over onto the other side. We'll hop over onto the other side. The rest, of this, the rest of this side is actually pretty good. It just, you know, the road is, has a super elevation and we'll take the, water, the rest of the water on this side. Not a big project, but it's a good time to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, currently, um, these are preliminary plans. There's concept preliminary and final. These are preliminary plans. VTRAN's environmental section is reviewing these plans to make sure it adheres to the categorical exclusion document, which kind of looks at everything. But we haven't submitted everything. It's just a process to see when that happens. Once that happens, then we're authorized to start looking at the right away. Um, and so we will need right away in a number of places. We're going to need right away um, at the intersection here at this property, right, uh, inter the very end of this intersection, because um, the village plows snow there all the time. They never had an easement from the property owner who would like to have an easement from them. We're going to actually have a little paved pad there so that the plow truck can go up and push snow there. So we need permanent easement from them for that. This, uh, this bank uh, will need permanent slope rights from that from the two property owners. Um, and I know the, the guy that had the problem with uh, the uh, sinkholes is fine with that. In the, in the ravine, we're going to need easements from all the adjoining property owners. And they need to be permanent easements. The town always has the ability to go in there and maintain this. Because right now there's there's no access, there's no way to maintain it. And, and so there's an old water line that went in there at one point in time. And it's kind of, you can see where it went, it's kind of flat. That's going to be the access point to get in here. And we would ask for a permanent maintenance easement for that also. The rest of the project, West, uh, West Main, there's no easements in the for. That's going to take some time to get the easements, to meet with people, talk it over with them, show what the plans are. I met with a couple of them on site when we were surveying. Their one comment is that they, Wish that we could cut some more trees for their view. <laughs> which, which, which I'm not sure that's. But they seem they, they recognize there's a problem there. Uh, it needs to be 
Okay. It's good. All right, good. So, uh, fire's maintenance goal of getting the easements from the property owners. What is there for maintenance? What do we have to do every year? Well, uh, in, in what are you asking in terms? Down. Do we have the right? That's why they, he's. No, no, no. Pump, uh, you're talking what's about the pump, pump in the main holes? Or? Are we yeah, uh, cleaning the garage or cleaning it out? The, Talk about the ravine area? The, yeah. There shouldn't be a lot of maintenance. Okay. There should be. That's why we're doing this. Um, if you have fabric, because that's all sandy soil in there too. Right. If you have fabric down and stone on top, then it's not going to wash underneath it. We're, we're treating all the water that's coming to right. it from right. the main street. We're treating it before it gets there. So the maintenance is going to be in the okay. manholes, right. not in the right. street. Um, so costs. Um, and again, it's broken into two different projects, the, the intersection and then Johnson Street Extension, the Ravine and West Main. So um, the Main Street, Johnson Street intersection is about 102,000, 1025 for that. And we're also, with that, we're going to take it up to the end of the limits here and to the limits here. Um, and we're going to cold plane that after we're done and <coughs> pay it down so it doesn't look like it's all been, you know, patched. Um, the ravine restoration is 256,000, let's say 257, 257,000. Now the other coordination uh, issue with this is that the, the village is planning on putting new sewer and water on Johnson Street extension. They're actually going to move this pump station uh, back a little bit, which is going to help us in the long run. Yeah. Uh, so that we can keep the road a little bit in the next phase. Um, their project is ahead of ours kind of because, of, because of the funding source. It looks like it might go at the end of the summer this fall, which would be perfect because we want the water and sewer done, and done before we get there because everything that we're doing is above that with the exception of the catch basins. And their okay. design engineer has our plans about where catch basins are going. So okay. this could be a project that could go out to, to bid this winter. Gotcha. Okay. And then it could be spring, summer construction next year. And I think that will work right. You know, the right away is going to take time yep. to get through that. Um, but you know, the plants are in pretty good shape right now. Sounds good. Any questions? No, oh, sounds excellent. I'm. Everything feels um, good with the easement. The easement so I think they will. I don't think any of them are really controversial. Well, yeah, uh, right, because it's not like you're right in front of people's houses right. or taking something yeah. away from them. Yeah, I don't anything yeah. bad about it whatsoever. No. It's them. Are they going to have to move some, is the village going to have to move some utility poles? Yeah. Is, yeah. yeah, two of them. Yeah, they, two right. of them right here. And right. we've already talked to them about it. Okay. So it doesn't seem like that's going to be a problem. Right. Right, just when they're doing the work, that that needs to happen as well. I'm, um, I'm glad we have been able to put all these projects together as one project. You know, this is this is one of those yeah. that you go, oh yes, okay, here was an opportunity to put a bunch of things right. together so we do it in a holistic manner instead of you doing it and then a year and a half later well, you, you have to come in and dig it up. Yeah, moving equipment yes. In and out. yeah, yeah. It's definitely yeah. got to be an, an, a good, efficient way to do it. So we're dealing with a now the intersection is going to be locked. Are you going to have a better view coming off? Am I still on Main, Street, Main by the Street? Catholic Church. Or the Catholic Church. Catholic Church coming up. So you're going to be out here as a stop bar right here. So you're going to be further out, so you're going to be able to look down the road. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Not only that, but, but with this band cut back, <coughs> uh, yeah. I think you're going to have better sight distance. Yeah, it's going to be a lot better. Yeah. Um, <coughs> we looked at a number of different scenarios here, and I think that works the best. Uh, we're not crossing any pedestrians. Correct. Here at all. They're they're going to come up on either side. They're going to come up and go this way, and then further down where we have better sight distance. At some point, we can do another pedestrian crossing there. Right. But we need to get them away from this. Right. right. Yeah, I think you're right with that bank. Because right now, you're, 
you're halfway into that intersection, halfway into the road before you can see anybody coming yeah. up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were watching uh, the intersection <coughs> after this plan was done just to see what people were doing now. And people were creeping out when they're coming up yeah. the hill and then taking that past yeah. the church and then they're going to take a right to yeah. go to the chair. Right. They were pulling up pretty much where to get into that middle, like yeah. you're saying, to right. be able to see around the berm. Now, the pedestrian issue was something that we we don't have a lot of pedestrians, but if you're going to make them cross, we said for the few people that are going to go there, they can use the crossings at the uh, Opera House area so they can stay on the south side of Main Street and then cross over. And there'd be a few people that shoot that corner, obviously, but at least we'll have a mark safe. safe yep. Yeah. Looks good. We get all yep. these projects going at the same, not at the same time, but pretty right. much. In an orderly sequence. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. Thank you very much. Good Appreciate it. Yeah. You know, that road to the Aquaman Network. You want, to, you want me to come off the black road because they'll be working on uh, that roundabout over Marshall will be backed up halfway to Johnson for they get there. Uh, if we do what? It's already backed up now. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This week, or excuse me, last week I was right in front of McMahon's, backed up from yeah. from the Marshall roundabout. Now, I'm going to don't know what the percentage is, but I'm going to say 40 percent of the cars that go through that cut where the flat road with the black road. Now they're going to have to go around to it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when we're and we're with the when we talk on the there's the yes the, the better connections grant and how to stop that going through the village. Yes. We're definitely going to stop them going through the village. And, and it's interesting that the studies with better connections that they've done. They said basically the problem is with the roundabout. Is that Thank people you. are too bad? Yeah. yeah, they don't use directional lights. Yeah, they don't, well, they don't, and they don't stop. It's like everybody's like, well, when you get there, you have to stop. No, you don't. No, you don't have to stop. You have to, you know, it's to, just. You to know. me, now I know we're off base, so Jim can talk about it, but to me, they should have back this way, they should have uh, uh, shoot to go to go to round the belt, or even hit the round the belt. Well, that's. It, it, and, and I, it seems as people get used to it, they, it, it is. You don't even, you're not even really using the roundabout. If you think about it that way, yeah. you're just hooking right around. But so many people feel they have to stop that it's just like, oh. Well, it's not, well, it's not why they have to because I've seen it a lot of times that, especially if you want to go to Morrisville and they're coming up through. Yeah. That car's probably doing about 40, 30 miles an hour when it hits that intersection, so you don't know if he's really going to yes. stop or not. So or, wh it. or where they're going, right. <laughs> Okay, um, what's five? The local emergency management plan. Oop. What do we need to do, Ron? It's an annual update. It's that just uh, a yeah, regional planning helped on this. Brad helped on this. It's a it's called the local emergency management plan. It used to since I've been in Hyde Park, it's changed titles three times. So this is hopefully the last one, but the LEMP just sets out sort of the order of calls. Calls, so right? There's a, okay. There's a yeah. problem, who to reach, and so on and so forth. Emergency operations center, and yeah. Yeah. shelters, and all those good things. So the change that they made with the name was that the select board has to be presented with this at a meeting, usually by May first. Okay. This time we're it's close really to May late. 1st. Yeah, that's all right. It's close. And that presentation would be just handing out the document, looking at it, signing it, which would be the chair of the select board, and then filing with the state. This also, it's funny that we have those heavy storms down south in Waterbury, because I think maybe Washington County potentially could be a disaster zone in some of those yeah. roads because there's some significant roof Sounds like damage it. Right. done. <clears throat> right. And in order to get the maximum state grants for those declared disasters, you have to have the LEMP in place. So we have a little uh -huh. bit of a okay. window where we actually don't have one because April 30th it expired. So next year, I told Brad and Carol, who were the people that are supposed to be pushing this along, um, 
Brad said he was going to do it, and then he didn't do it, so we ended up kind of trying to get Carol involved, and um, Alexa at Regional Planning actually sent the draft for us to review and fill a few holes in, along with what Brad had started, um, to complete the LEMP the way it uh, needed to be completed. So that happened late. Sorry about that. Okay. But yeah, because you don't want to get caught with one of those, right? Be, okay. We'll be back square with our checklist. Because, boy, that's the kind of technicality that the feds would definitely pick up on. And well, they, they audit, could be, you know, basically yeah. do an audit before they even talk to you. Right. Did you have all this stuff in the road? So. so, I have a digital version, but that's one that, that document there is the certification for Susan okay, the, so if they if there's a mistake, do you want me to correct it in pencil, or or actually I could leave it and then they'd never get me. <laughs> What's it say on there? My home phone number is wrong. I believe it that way. I know. It's like okay, I'm gonna try that one. So get a motion to approve the LEMP for 2019. Then we'll be. So move. Second. Um, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Seven. Okay, second here. <laughs> would explain why he couldn't get me that time, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> that does explain it. All right, here we go. Better connections and what we're doing. Um... And, and several of these issues that, that I've, I've got later kind of all comes from the better connections and as we're trying to get people involved and um, what one of the things that we've decided to do is the the Memorial Valley rail trail folks are uh, doing a big thing on Father's Day weekend all up and down the trail and different towns are doing different things to just to inform people and make them aware of the trail it's really the beginning of fundraising that they need to raise like two million dollars to finish the trail a lot of that expense mm -hmm. goes into a couple of bri bridges that they have to put the, the bridges are whew, those bridges are expensive um, so so we decided in dealing with better connections and trying to you know have every get some community things done that we would do something and I have to tell you the, the the fork and gavel are just the most delightful people to work with um, you couldn't you couldn't ask for a better little restaurant cafe to come into a community and be involved and and um, <clears throat> so we've decided that that we're going to participate that day and it turns out that um, several years ago they did a uh, they did sort of a tour around the village with all the because we've got so many historic buildings in the village, and of course, uh, in terms of the rail trail, we're the only community that you can actually do a loop that has two. You know, you could you go down past Paul, so you go down, you could come up the village that way. You could go through the village, loop back around, and get on the trail down there, or you could actually go, do that piece of you could actually do a circle just staying in Hyde Park using the rail trail as part of it. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that the, that the, the library previously, um, she's gone down and they've done storyboards along that part of the trail. You'll see the fences down there now. The school is really excited about doing rotating art projects that they do down there. So we're getting a lot of a good interest. So we said, well, why don't we just take Let's see what we can pull together as a community because we know we are we have the ice cream social that's a big deal and doing things, um, and old home days if we can get people you know more involved in doing it. So how about if we in June try just a little take that Saturday um, and do it as a as a fun family thing and we're getting and again through the grant we have the money they're doing uh, and again the. Uh, the uh, Brickett and his wife had dug up from before the historic <clears throat> pictures and information that they put on, bu on buildings in the village um, to go around and, and uh, just do a little educational tour around the village. 
So we thought we'd, we'd do that, and again, money from the grant is paying for it, but realize that the signs that we're putting on, some of it, are going to be in the town right away. So just to know that we're going to end, and this is we, a pop-up event is something that you're either doing just then or you might want to leave up for a couple of months. I think we're going to leave these up for a couple of months just to encourage folks. They're going to get some, you know, they they do, you can see big checkers, oh, We've got, and if it's a crummy day, you know what? We don't have to do it. <laughs> That's what we got into if it's the rain. Um, we're going to do crow decay on the lawn at the um, at the Page Mansion. Uh, just a variety of little fun things to get to get again. See what kind of interest making. Trying to do some things in the community that are family focused and fun that aren't going to cost people a lot of money. You know. Were you on the board when the, that lady, the old Moore place, the old Moore farm? You know what I'm talking about? She was going to do a biathlon on the rail trailer. Were you on the board then? She came and wanted our support. Remember that wrong? Yeah, she came to one meeting and then you, I think you said, come back if you need our support for anything. Right. I think <laughs> that would be the person to get a hold of. You want to bring some people in on that rail trail for that day. Well, we don't, and, and again, it's sort of, they're, they're trying, I think the rail trail folks, their, their first thought was, you know, you get people going from town to town. So you've got Johnson is doing some stuff. I know Morrisville is doing some stuff. Oh, okay. And see, so we got different towns doing it. I thought, well, I don't know how many people are, because of course their ideal is, is that you, oh, I forgot to bring them, that, you know, you get people that, you know, the pledges, the fundraising, the thing. So if you bike X number of miles, you know, you raise money and give it to the rail trail. Um, we thought, well, let's just, since they're doing and we're doing some advertising, let's see if we can, um, you know, and, and had thought, too, as, as we might as part of a prize to encourage people and families to, to do the loop so you could, you could come into the village oh, and yeah. you could start at the village and you could go around and do the whole loop. And at the end, there are little questions that you'd ask, get answer on each of the things. And if you do, you get a prize. And we thought we'd do a couple of... You know, if if you, the family completes this, you're entered for a drawing and buy a couple of, you know, things at at the uh, Fork and Gavel for breakfast, gift certificates, and those sorts of things. Just to see about, because again, we know you know the ice cream social are really fun things, and you get mm -hmm. people involved, and just sort of tapping into that rail trail and see what we can we 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 can have. And since that came from. Um, an, an artist came in and was interested in maybe could could you figure it's interesting people are beginning to think about the rail trail and how you can turn it into economic development it's just it's you know but could you do some nice art along the trail and working you know with this with the Vermont Studio Center that like they've got a whole barn full of all kinds of things that are or local people doing photographs or just variety of things and you start looking and see what other places have done along rail trails. I think the best thing it's just to create a toilet income would be get the ATVs coming up and doing a parade up the rail trail. Yeah, yeah well yeah. since they <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Since they're allowed on it, that would certainly be quite a feat. <laughs> I think you're right. I think you're right. You want revenue? Right? Yeah. I always said that. I mean, I'm not a four-wheeler or side to side yeah. person, but I just don't think it's, you know, there. there's some money coming in right there. Mm -hmm. you know. See, I think that real trail is all over the board. And I don't disagree with you saying so, but when, when they first, first promoted this, this was going to go down through the cornfields and down through the rivers and down through the woods and stuff, where you're going to be able to see nature and stuff. Now you want to plaster it with a damn friggin' art everywhere. You're polluting the damn place instead of well, making I it Well, I, th I think the areas people are talking about, well, have you been over to the, to the, um, to the trailhead in Jeffersonville? 
No, well, see if you like that's the sort of thing, and they got an old caboose, no. and you. Put oh yeah, yeah, in the yeah. train. I yeah, see yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I mean, I think that's the sort of thing that people are talking about. They're talking about miles and miles of it's just sort of, ooh, here's an area that's really interesting that gets people to stop and think about. You might want to come up. I just think well, and the and the fork and gavel is is talking about doing ice cream in the summer. Hey, you could get the you, you know. get the shiner and bring up the railroad. You know, yeah. 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 cows yeah. up the rail trail. Yeah, it's the old C J N L C. Yeah. 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 So anyway, we're just kind of plugging away at it. And, we can't, because you know, it's a motorized vehicle, so you can't. Snow machines are. That's right. Don't, don't get him started on his favorite topic. <laughs> Drawn is our... I thought I'd just throw it in there. That's right. You're, you know? just, you're just being bad. Just keep okay. it up a little bit, you know? Ron, is there any way you can maybe bring it up online somewhere in the age of transportations? right away when the districts allow signs to be put up on a special occasion. There's so many hours they have to be up. They can be up and then they have to be taken down. Uh, I don't know if you can find it or not. No, I have a, they have it in formal, <clears throat> formal, informal, formal policies. It's not based on state law, which prohibits pretty much any signage. Right, well. But they have an enforcement policy basically, which says we will not enforce for so long if somebody decides to put some signs, like come to High Park Village with like a real oh, estate. Okay, right, that sort yeah, of thing, right. Event today, they might get, they put that up on Friday, they might not see it till Monday and the crew might come by on Thursday. They don't, they don't have an immediate pickup thing as long no, as it's not no, creating just say, like, I what? know that this has been brought up. But they actually wrote that up because they were getting a lot of questions about are you as aggressive as sending somebody out on Saturday to clean up the roads? Yeah. And they might if it's a safety sight line. Yeah, they just, had yeah this, right. they just had the thing that, that uh, uh, the politician signs. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. no, no more in the right ways. Yeah. yeah. That's been in fact for years. Yeah, it has, but nobody's enforced it. Well, because it has just gotten so blatant. I mean, it, and they're only supposed to be up for like... Yeah. A very short yep. window and people yeah. put them up months before and now everybody's making those sorts of signs so here's buy the mattress signs I yeah. didn't know there were so exactly. many mattresses for sale sort of thing yeah you know? and yeah. On sale. Yeah, yeah, there. The <laughs> yeah yeah I'm I'm glad to see all that go okay conflict of interest policy it's a, um, on your package, it's a to template that. from DLCT, modified for Hyde Park, required by state law to be adopted by the select group by July 1st. Uh, uh, I, I, it's a, up to your own opinions as to what, what you might want to do to change it or edit it. The goal is to have one adopted by July 1st. July 1st, sir. Give you discussion tonight and adoption in June. There's, the minimums are in here from the state, uh, according to the LCT. So there's, I don't know if there's anything terrible in there. It's in the packets. It's a separate document, not, yeah. not stationed together. Oh. Okay. So I, I think probably what we need to do is take it home and read it and see what changes again. And this is, you say, this is, this is the minimum. So they, they, okay. DLCT is usually pretty good with presenting something that's maybe a little bit more than less as far yeah. as their procedures go, but it meets the minimum state requirement. Okay. So if there was any proposed changes, I want to hear about it before then the next meeting so I can look it up, make sure it's not one of the mandatory provisions that state law requires. But the intention is to get everybody on the same page, almost. But you can always make little tweaks to it for high park purposes. Right. Okay. But if you have a paragraph or a section you want me to look into and say, do we really have to do that? I can get that for you. Okay. How's that? We'll take it home and look at it and figure out, see if anything, if it what makes sense, what doesn't. Next meeting. Okay. Yeah, we'll do it the next meeting. Okay. Let me put that uh, yeah. one down there. Okay. Today it feels like you can talk about June. You know, tomorrow we'll be back. We'll think in April. But mm. <laughs> here's a new 
um, a neighborhood improvement program. Run. View. Right. Run. Run. <laughs> Run. Help me view this. And here's where this idea came from. On uh, and actually, it's kind of interesting. And I'll 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 do the same thing because one going back on the <clears throat> on the Father's Day weekend thing that Saturday that, that we're going to do it. And I've talked with Fork and Gavel, and we're going to see about just for like an hour of it, giving away free ice cream cones. So we'll go. A couple of us will go volunteer and sit out in front of Fork and Gavel and give away and give away ice cream. But on Green Up Day, <clears throat> I went and sat with and with the uh, healthy Vermonters. We did a put a table up out in front of Fork and Gavel, and um, was really glad to be there with lots of extra green up bags because a lot of people stopped by and needed and needed more bags um, and when they got information and they w went into fork and gavel and got warmed up and then they'd come out and chatting about a variety of issues and and one of the things that we got talking about are um, properties and it's particular and it's been an irritant to a lot of people and I when you when you come off the roundabout and you go down Church Street, that first house on your right, yeah, with all that Actually, stuff on the porch, the actual property, we'll just yeah. let it go and all the stuff on the porch. But we know that we have other properties around town that people, uh, oh, some of them have been abandoned. Who owns that now? What, what's the deal? Ackley wasn't there, huh? No, no, did Ackley own that? Well, bank. what happened? Probably a bank or mortgage bank company. Got it. Oh. It, yeah. Because. They've been out there for a long time. Oh, yeah, they've been out of there for a long time. Right. And trying to, and I talked with Ron, you know, can you can you just go clean up things? And I know there are other people that have other properties. And with some people, we got into conversations about, you know, there are people who will intentionally not finish their house because they're afraid of their property taxes going up. So you end up lowering everybody's value in the neighborhood by having a crummy-looking piece of property. And uh, as several people had suggested that we ought to see if we can come up with a tax that I won't, since we're being recorded, come up with what kind of tax you would call it. <laughs> you know, but, but how to, um, <clears throat> you know, when, when a community is, uh, and neighbors are suffering by somebody not taking care of their property, how do you, what's available to try to get it? Well, that's going to be hard. In, 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 a, in a better oh, place. Oh. Well, it, it, it is, but, you know, undaunted. Have have Didn't say it was easy. <laughs> well, we, we looked at, well, you can have a policy, or, or we looked at sort of what other communities, you know, not just in Vermont, but around, have tried to do with something that. And you'll see in your packet a description, a neighborhood improvement program. Okay? And that, again, because you've just gotten it, but I'd say just, um, Look at it, and and um, you know, and and think about it, because um, and you know, there there are some folks that their properties just um, again, what what you want to do is create a structure so you have a structure to function in to be able to do these sorts of things, and you can get volunteers or you can do whatever, but it's like right here you have a policy, so it is that you can go and help people. You know, there can be folks that they just gotten older and they just can't keep up with it anymore. Um, they're just a, a variety of things. So so I got, <laughs> and Ron did for me saying, okay, there got to be, we probably can't go the tax route to tax people because your property looks crummy. Even though yeah. I, I kind of, <laughs> well, and particularly when people are doing it because you know they're doing it because they're concerned about their property taxes going up. Um, and, and I, What's interesting, when I was in the legislature, Rutland went to work, and I, I make myself a note and follow up, I, uh, an approach that they were taking in trying to encourage folks um, to buy houses that were run down and to, and to invest the time and energy and a lot of sweat equity, so particularly you're getting young couples, um, that what they they did and and they made an agreement that they would not reappraise the property for like three or four years, so that folks would get a tax break 
as part of their incentive for coming in and redoing a house and, and, and they've gotten several whole neighborhoods really upgraded using that kind of an incentive to be able to do that. So, uh, yeah, so, uh, so uh, you know, finding some positive policy. So I said, well, well, let's, because, I mean, that house and several other houses around are making me crazy. <clears throat> and, and if part of our whole, um, you know, for me, with better connections, with trying to do all these things right, we've got a nice new school. How do you make Hyde Park more attractive? Is literally making it more attractive, I think, is, you know, is, is part of that sort of thing. And having these sorts of community groups that want to do it. One, one of the, a couple of people stopped by um, that are relatively new to the village and wanted to know what kind of gardening, flowers, all those sorts of things that we could do. Several people wanted to know about going out and doing the work in the, in the roundabout to clean that up, which Cambridge just put cones around theirs. Yeah. They, put a, they put a sign both ways, people mm -hmm. at work, and had volunteers out cleaning mm -hmm. it up. And I went, oh, okay, wait a minute, because part of our concern was we'd have to have one of the guys there and flagging it. I'm going, wait a minute, if Cambridge can do that, you know, just, okay. <laughs> the one but, in, are you talking about the one in Cambridge? Well, that's, yeah, that's what they just, what they did with theirs. It was, and I understand those issues. What, did, have we had the meeting with the, if those people shown up? Okay, all right. But there is a, there is an old, yeah. Yeah. Plan to try to figure that out. Right, to try to figure out how to, but I thought what was interesting is that there, there are, um, younger people in the community, and it's just like with North Hyde Park and doing that project, that are willing to step up to the plate and do things to help them make the community look better. So I thought, well, let's, you know, just get you to look at something like this and then see if we can find some, some interest in developing this sort of a thing. I'll tell you something that would help. And I don't know how you would do it, but there's a lot of working families that's working paycheck to paycheck to paycheck. Yep. In, in this community and stuff. And when you load your pickup and go over to the recycle center or the sellers yep. up there and it costs you forty-five, fifty dollars yep. to throw your friggin' trash away, that's a lot of damn money in some people's but pocketbook. It is. Yeah. And and part of because you'll see I put a little thing. <laughs> I thought about that and say, you know, do you do a uh, you know, I think white green up day can be so popular, you know, in tires become an issue. Do we do, and, and in terms of thinking a broad scope of, because we've got money in the economic development fund that we put there, to be able to do a day when we pick up the tab for doing that sort of thing. And with this improvement fund that you can use some of that money to be able to pay for cleaning, doing something like that, we can probably take, you know, Brian's crew, and because it's the town doing it, you know, to be able to do a variety of things, but to come up with a with way. With Brian. Shackets. You know that program. Oh, I know that. Well, but, right at the <coughs> moment, suck and win. Right. Yeah. I'm going to call the Rich Westman and ask him to take a seriously hard look. He's on the view board. The please take a hard Well, look. yeah. I will, too. Be um, we, we talk about wanting people to learn to do things properly, right. and then you cut the funding to the program exactly. that helps people do it properly. That was on that diversion board, right? Diversion? Well, no, it's not. I mean, some, well, some of the from diversion, they do send them, but the judges can send a variety of people to it. Right. Yeah. I need to, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, no, I'd like to see a, a, a couple of days during the summer or something where... Uh, People can drop off stuff that yeah. doesn't cost them. Yep. You're not seeing the uh, you're not <clears throat> seeing the tires and refrigerators on the brick road. Nope, that's right. That's right. Exactly. And just say, figure out what it is, and you know, work with Casella to get a dumpster down here, and whoever the tire people are, and just tie that into a. And again, a couple of these. That here's here's what we're doing. Yeah, you got to be careful with it. Oh yeah. And, and yeah. You well, you got to be careful with it, but you got your your. It, it's a good idea. Yeah. 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 So you know, because it's just like Dave said, forty, forty five dollars each yeah. week or whatever. Yeah. You know, it's getting expensive. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You'd rather, you'd rather we, see it dropped off somewhere. Well that pulling it up on the back. Like, yep. Yep. Tires. Well, and that's why you get a couple of big dumpsters down here. 
it, the cost know, is a lot different we, for us we, to do it that way. We do have zoning in Hyde Park. Yep. And a lot of things that I've noticed lately around Hyde Park, and you can drive around Hyde Park, and you can see cars in people's dooryards, mm -hmm. and you're only supposed to have what? One car that's zero. Not, zero now. Zero now for Do unregistered and uninspected. Well, drive around lately. And oh, see yeah. Some of that. Oh, I'm, yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. You, you can keep it for 90 days now. 90 days? Yeah. You're not that's, supposed to have that's that many. It. The, the clock is ticking. But it's zero on registrations now? Unregistered. Unregistered. Uninspected is you can store it there for 90 days only. Okay. Yeah, but you move it and you bring it back in a year. Depends on how close the enforcement's washing it. Yeah, yeah exactly. I know, I just wonder, I, you know, yeah, some people would move it for five days and, and, and then they come back. Tired of it. Yeah. 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 But, you know, if, if we if we want to change how people think about Hyde Park and how Hyde Park feels about itself, I think these are the it's sorts of things that can help do it. Well, and I'm not saying nothing bad about this. Oh, no, no, no. I know you're so, not. Right. Out there in the television world, I'm not. The other, no, no, no. The other angle was the um, public-private. So there are some uh, unkept public properties that we could focus on that would say, uh, I'm thinking of the... Um, that corner lot on Eden Street used to be the old snow. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So there's one of them. But that, yeah. those are examples of public property that is there something you could do there and who's going to pay the $300 for some barrels so the village improvement can plant something there? What do you yeah. do? Yeah. Just pick it up and left yeah. there? You have better property we just purchased up North Hyde Park and got that building we're trying to get burnt and we can't burn it. You can't burn it. Okay. So anyway, I think there's a, there's a bunch of these smaller projects who's going to do right. it. Right. Right. And right. Everybody kind of goes like this. And well, that's right. But we sort of, and again, this is where I think we get we can s start with. Okay, let's form a, let's have a group, and then you have a policy, and here's what you're going to do, and start looking for volunteers. Because again, it's it's um, uh, and and you realize how, how important a local place to sit and have coffee. I'm telling you, you just go sit down here and have coffee, and you're going to talk to an awful lot of Hyde Park people about. And yeah. I'll tell you right now, once See, this not gets a, in there, not real, it's not going to be the town constable to go tell some people. Okay, we'll remember that, right? Said, we're not sending the town, the town constable to tell people. <laughs> Short lived job, I would say. Okay, town audit. Is a, we have a proposal from Glenna Pound for the FY19 audit. It's an annual letter of agreement with the um, management letter type thing. The select board has to sign, and town treasurer will sign, and town administrator is on here right now. So, question has come up in uh, probably the last six months about generally auditing and who should do it, and we're in a three-year contract with her right now. So she was under contract from a prior decision of the board to go 18, 19, and 20. So we're going to do 19, which is year two out of the three. Uh, we had a group meeting here not too long ago, three, three months ago, I can't exactly remember when. Uh, and we were discussing some of the finer details of auditing, so to speak. And there was a discussion about whether or not to send out an RFP to a firm or continue services with Glenna. And we never really got that resolved. So it, partly it's under a current contract with her. There is a three-year award, if you will, that was done by the select board uh, uh, after waiving a bid process requirement by your policy. Uh, it was two years ago now. I think that <coughs> So there was no bid for this current three-year contract. I think this is, you know, we're over 10 years of working with her right. uh, as far as Kim goes. I mean, Kim's whole career has been with, pretty much with Glenna. Um, so it's on the agenda <coughs> to sign the engagement letter, which is, again, this is the annual, just like the NEMS agreement sets out what they're going to do and what we're going to do and gives out those kind of objectives. The question of the contract that we're under is what the board may or may not want to talk about 
because it's a contract, I would probably have that in the executive session, given that we've already signed it. Um, and I, I know Kim's started to work with Glenna on the 19th. There's a bill in your packets there. Right. Uh, doing some right. preliminary work. Uh, so things are moving forward in one track, and then there's this, what are we, what are we <coughs> doing with audit <laughs> services generally? You know, so at your pleasure, whether you want to go into executive session and talk about it. Uh, again, this, if the engagement letter is signed, is <coughs> engaged to work with Allison and Kim on the 19 audit as she's done in prior years. I thought we'd finish up the other stuff and go into the executive session on that. Last, last week? Okay, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. okay, yep. And we'll go into executive session. <laughs> right, okay. Okay, courthouse parcel improvements. We're going to get those benches out there yet. <laughs> uh, yes. I'll be all rusty. <laughs> Have cement rust. <laughs> so, working with the Department of Health, uh, the town applied for and received ten thousand dollar grant to help accelerate the courthouse project. Pocket Park is part of the Better Connections grant. So, because we're doing the Better Connections grant with Dubois King, looking at village generally revitalization of Hyde Park and economic development, the Department of Health has federal money as well that also says, "Is your community working on healthy?" projects of any kind, we have money to spend for implementation of those. So one of the projects that's been part of most of the village studies has been a place for people to hang out and sit down near the sidewalk uh, in an area that's not maybe directly related to the courthouse. So this will be a little bit offset from the courthouse in front of Roger, Roger's office, Sheriff's office. Um, and the Department of Health has a process for making sure they're quick build projects, which is what the grant program is called. So she uh, is calling every once a month, check in, how far are you along, are we going to get this done? <laughs> it's almost like a uh, very hands-on Department of Health, which a lot of the D-Trans projects, they did, they did a roll for years. Here it is, a quick build project that we're supposed to have this thing built by October 30th or November 1st this year. So uh, it includes the the three benches, which were previously granted six years ago now, five years ago, uh, a berm around the outside for plantings, and a watering station for humans and dogs. So that's the basic concept. The village is right. interested in helping with the watering station. The town crew will have some involvement with the berm. A bunch of volunteers <coughs> are interested in the plantings, and the, the contractor will actually do a concrete octagon uh, so that it's uh, stable, low maintenance. Then we've talked about other types of surface, but most of them end up with higher maintenance, whether it's mud or stone or uh, yeah. bricks, any of that kind of stuff. Greg, four or five years ago, drew the plans for yeah. that. Yep. Oh yeah, it's been a, it's been a, yeah. been a to do list for a long time, except for the bought the part. benches, right? Yeah. And I think it's I think it was, was thirteen yards of the concrete to do that. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's roughly 12 or 14 feet across mm -hmm. in an octa yeah. octagon shape, so a little bit, a little bit of work. So that's the next, the other item on the agenda tonight is the uh, MOU with the courthouse side judges. And the side judges uh, have signed the MOU, which sets out more than what has been done in the past. Anybody that's been around long enough might remember the town clock repair. Yeah. They might remember the veteran memorial committee that yeah. was established with VFW and the Village Improvement Association. And of course, everybody's aware how long the benches have been sitting around. All of those three projects use county property, and there's never been an agreement on who does the maintenance of those things. Yeah. So because we're starting to put sort of real money into the project between the memorial, the clock needs some repair, and the pocket park. The MOU would clean up some history we have in the land records where the association and VFW were responsible for maintenance. They don't want to be on the record as being responsible for maintenance. The town and the county <coughs> would be responsible for maintenance so that when we do have a project like 
cleaning the memorial, uh, uh, repairing a bench, yeah. repairing the clock. The select board would be the primary responsible party, and then we would collectively reach out to the community. VFW has agreed to do a fundraiser if needed for the memorial. The county has agreed to put some funds into the clock and miscellaneous. You know, so you really, it's a coordination thing more than the community supports all three of those things. It's right. Just, it's the coordination of, to, and the clarity of who's sort of going to lead the way. And on that part, that is county property, right? Now, do we have to get permission from all the towns in the county to do this? And as the other towns... No, that's what the side judges do. The side judges sign as the property owner. Okay, now, yeah. now can we ask for some money from the other towns well, in the county? They have they have maintenance money in their budget. Right, so they... The side judges have all that. We don't have to go to the towns. To build it. Yeah, they'll, they'll, they've agreed to help with some maintenance. We got a grant to take care of the building. Yeah, so so they've agreed like. But we we can do that because the site judges can. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so we got everybody then, and then in the future, other costs. Everybody that wants to see it done has said yes. We'll help you in the future. Mm -hmm. I guess it hasn't been. It's sort of been one of these. They're in charge. Yeah. So it's yeah. like okay, we're going okay. We figured we figured this out now. If we town are in charge. Then we town got to get ten thousand dollars to get the project done, whereupon those other people doing it weren't making any progress or getting any money. So the MOU would would basically do that. It clear it re, replaces the two thousand and five agreement, which people didn't necessarily want to be a part of, and gives it a new two thousand nineteen agreement between the town and county to work with. The community on projects. <coughs> so it just needs uh, authorization for Susan to sign if you're agreeable. Make the motion to have Susan sign the agreement. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? I just wonder what you have to do when you were chair. You wonder about all these things you're signing, right? Or someday they're just going to come take you away. Right. Get bills. <laughs> well, actually, you should be like starting to get 10 different pens in the sewing. Oh, there we go. Okay. We'll auction them off. Executive orders. Let's move to the chill. He's in the draft. Okay, get that back to him. <laughs> okay, uh, the purchase orders. Milling East There's Main and Rogers. Yeah, yeah, Roger. Roger. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Already done one. Yeah, that's right. Milling of. Uh, East Main Street, we got a quote for 13000 We could probably get it done for less than that. There's a simple reason for that is Rolly, I guess, is going to the same company coming to Morrisville around the first week of June. I, I was told the 11th. The 11th. And as far as the moving fee, <coughs> we could probably get that cut. You're talking. You're talking to put that whole old dirt. No, no. Taken, taken off two inches. Take it right off. Mill it. Store the material right up back of the garage. Yeah. So we can use it. And then coming in and putting the top coat on of two inches when we can scrape the money up to able to do that. Change the culverts that need to be changed and get the ditching done. I had a friend of mine who I worked with for 40 years. He's an engineer. I took pictures of that road right from one end to the other. We have about seven holes down there in about oh, this yeah. thing. Yeah. And a lot of them are an inch and a half. It's just that top coat 
Yeah. I don't think there's two and a half inches of service on that. <laughs> I, that's yeah. what I was going to say. It's I look okay. down my major and I take a, my heavy hand and I tip down. Now, I'm going to ask you something. And, and just what I heard. You want to spend $13,000 to mill that, right? Then a couple of years, come rip it all up. Yeah. Are you going to put culverts in and I'll rip them up? We're going we're gonna to put the culverts in this year. We're going to mill it, put the culverts in. Use oh, the, I understand you. Use, oh, okay. use the stuff we I got back. Okay. Yeah. They came off the road, put that back in, yeah. compact it. Okay. okay, I was with you. I missed the culvert thing, too. Yeah. I thought that was sometime out there. Okay. Okay. okay, we're doing yeah. What's going to cost? Ooh, the culverts. Okay. I haven't got the price yet whether we're going to do it. You're not talking that big bulk skull. No, 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 no. We're just going to just... just we don't even have grant money for that yet. But roll this. East. Now, East Bay. East Bay. Oh. Now, how, how much you want to raise that? The height of the road? Height of the road. Not going to. You're talking about over at the other end. Yeah. Over there by Mike. Yeah. We're going to have to. That's going to take a lot more. That well, you're going to do it. You're going to do the whole thing. You ain't going to stop there, are you? No. That could be part of the box culvert project, I think. <clears throat> we can repair it and get it in decent condition and put it in to the box culvert project. Well, the box culvert's out there into the, almost the other end of the road. No, it's right down there. But down by McMahon's. Well, I call it our neighbor. Yeah, right. I call the box cover. I'm looking off Sunnyville Brook up there by Brussels. Brussels. We're on Brussels. You're in a different box cover. No, the box cover's down there. There's a three or four foot culvert near Centerville. <coughs> yeah. That's failed. It has no bottom. Yeah. 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 Reuse or yeah, whatever it is. Resource, and, and right. And to get it property. Yeah. That's a five foot drop there. Why, why put money into the road, then tear it up to do something else, something like state? We've got to, we've got to do something to it. We want to fix it right. If you're going to. If you want to spend the money, just fix it right and do it right. You're going to have to bring that grade that comes out of it. That whole Garrett, parking lot. That whole parking lot, you're going, have, you're going to have to bring that down. And we already discussed that. We had a meeting over there with Gary Hershack one night. <coughs> yeah. 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 Right, right, but we're talking about the box, the culvert, the large 60-inch culvert or whatever is there now, turning that into a box culvert, which will change the road elevation all the way to Route 15. It's about 350 feet right. long. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a couple hundred thousand dollar project. That's not what Roger's talking about to get the piles out. Just to get them. I mean, I don't. Right. Yeah, I don't. I don't think we can. Well, I mean, in terms of priorities, I don't think we can afford to do that. Be what two or three years before we get to that box cover. Oh, right. yeah. 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 We gotta have a fix now. Yeah, the road's got it right. We gotta. Do we got to do something with the road and now. And we can put that right into that grant from off Route 15, about 380 feet back, for that box covers. Not really any money worth it. There's no, there's no bottom in that there, Neil? No, that one, that one is yeah. undersized. <coughs> okay. The one up to Centerville has no bottom. That's okay. okay. Four, okay. four foot at least culvert under <coughs> okay. Yeah. Just, that's that's the one I'm more concerned about. That's a really, that's a really hard spot. That's where I'm talking about, right? Or Omer Basso, right next to Omer Lake. It's just east of Centerville Road. Yes. It's hard to see. You have to get down in that house on the on the north on the south side of the road, and then you can see the. Where did Omer live? I just don't remember that box over. <laughs> thought you lived in Katie Falls. Yeah, no, right. I don't remember Katie's that. Huh? Right like there by uh, Dale's house. Go up there, there's another house. When did, I, always, I always thought he lived in Katie's Falls. He lived down there for quite a while. That's all I remember. Yeah, down by all, where the right. old uh, animal barn is. Maybe I'm yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking down by the veal farm. Right. Where Homer lived. Yeah, right. But I'm talking about the old slaughterhouse. <laughs> right? 
<coughs> where the entrance, the old slaughter, the good slaughter house is. Good that color right there. there. Okay. The one right on the east side of that driveway. Isn't that a box cover? No. No, no, no. that's just a pipe. Yeah, it's, a, it's just a, it's yeah. 18 or 24 inch pipe. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. There's no box no. cover down through there. No. You got the no. bridge and then you got that culvert. And then you got another culvert down there to the end. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's three. Well, oh, the, last wow. time, the old uh, Senator Brook Bridge. We're not I, I, I guess I'm thinking of the bridge. Yeah, we're not touching the bridge. That's a right, regular. The bridge is fine. Oh, okay. They just put that, that was bridge okay. back yeah, a few years ago. Yeah, right. yeah, that was back. That was only put in. Not that long ago, was it? 15, 20. That's 15, large, 20 years? Yeah. I think it's a large pipe. I don't think it's a bridge, per se. That's what I was thinking, the bridge. Yeah, because that went down, though. Yeah. Flood, <laughs> wasn't it? Well, it didn't go out, but... Yeah, well, it couldn't go... Did, did lock. It was shut down for quite a while. Yeah. Yeah, it was shut down for like 8, 10 years. <clears throat> yeah. So you're, you're talking all the way from... Where start? School. Start to school. Yeah, right there by um, Stigles. Anderson's there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Anderson's? Yeah, okay. You mentioned a new resident trying to figure out. I was, was going to say, I, I know it, that's right. You're never on. This is like. The Rooney Farm. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, if you want to go back. Yeah. Phew. Okay, all right. <laughs> Some, um, something's going to be done to that road. It is. Yes. Torturous, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, not if you drive they're, slower. They're doing what they can do to, you know, then the box cover will come in down there and what, probably go up be three, four, maybe three years. Yeah, probably. Okay. But short term, we is this to, what we want to do with it? Yeah, we got, we got to do something to that road in the meantime. I'm surprised that two inches does it. It seems to me as though those holes well, are about a half foot. Yeah, no, I took the pictures out to him and he, yeah. he looked at it and Basically, what it is is saying your top hole's coming right off. So you might just hold that hole mix right down off. through there. No, no, not on the top coat. No, not, that wasn't the whole mix. It was that. No, I can't. They don't want to. Who knows? Oh. Can't remember. But I believe that the thirteen thousand will be high. That, that's just the mill. Yep. Then we're going, we're going to use our 225 paving fund this year to pave it. Well, I don't know yet we, what we are going to use. We'll have some money left over on Battle Road. Yeah, you're talking about two budgets, so if they ever get their schedule fixed, Hutchins would finish paved Battle Row. Oh, yeah, right. That yeah. smoothed out a lot. It yeah, did. It is smooth. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, next imagine. year we had applied for Center Road paving grant from the state. Mm -hmm. That wasn't awarded, so we're probably another year or two out of their cycle. It's like every five, six years you might get some money from the state. We're we're at year four right now, so I can't tell you if it would happen next year. So we do have the two twenty five <coughs> starting July first for however whatever you want to do with uh, Center Road. I, well, we got to do something up there. I mean that's. That's another one that yeah. you've got to do something. I don't, I don't know. I feel I ain't going to do it. Well, I am going to stand my ground by saying don't put another Band-Aid on the damn thing. We've wasted enough money putting Band-Aids on. Even if you've got to wait a year, take that. we got that hot drag box. Even if you've got to drag the worst parts. You know what I'm saying? Well, this way here, you're going to get a lot of years out of this, doing it this way. Mm -hmm. Now, the, uh, the East Main. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm talking about the center road. That's right. Oh, yeah. yeah. No. We can drag that. You can places. get your, dips, yeah. your uh, wheel, wheel marks. Yeah. Okay. So it sounds like a plan. Shoot it. This is the area you're going to do one, one dot to which that's it. Okay. The other purchase order was the uh, stripping of right. the gravel pit. Right. Which is approved over the phone, but we can have a formal vote tonight. Oh, on the stripping, stripping the gravel pit. Yeah. 
you know, um, this purchase order is again high, which is good. But uh, Gero or Greg was up there, had his guy up there for uh, two hours on Wednesday, all day Thursday. No, I gotta take it about Tuesday afternoon when they got there. All day Wednesday, all day Thursday, part of Friday, and it's done. Did a nice yeah, job with the burn. Nice job. Really good. Friday did a nice job. I'm glad you're yeah. an operator. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was. And Greg did not charge the same moving fee at all. No permits. He just took care of it because he was in a pinch. Yeah. Save money where you can. Yeah, yeah. right. Okay, so yep. I guess what we need is a uh, motion to approve both those. Got a motion we approve both purchase orders. Second. Uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. <coughs> Annual dog warrant. That I did not find in my to do, so we can do that in June. Okay. Sorry, I didn't notice. Dogs get another 30 day free pass. <laughs> right? <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Wait till we go to Jake or something on that one. Yeah. Uh, okay, review the minutes. Oh, wrong. This is okay for me. Nope. That's okay. Thanks. Oh, yeah. Can you do that? Lost in the paper. I didn't see the minutes. I didn't either. No, I don't Okay, we'll defer until June. We can do that. I was looking, I thought, okay. Now, the town orders. I really like getting them that way. <laughs> it's, a, it's a trial, so I'll criticize you. Okay. No, no, I, ju I just, it was really, it was really helpful to go get a cup of coffee and, Jake's, Jake's and just, just be able to take time going through them. You know, I, I, uh, Which means, how did everybody else did, did folks get through them? I can open them. one, but Ron said that something okay. else. My computer, so I'll bring my computer. Well, Ron, okay. you can take Roger's home with you. No, I would. I, that was nice. Oh, yeah. right over mine. I can yeah. see where it would would be very very yeah. good. I like the way you did. I take my. I take my email. <laughs> <laughs> No, I stopped burning wood here a couple of years ago. <laughs> so it's a good TV thing. So just to be clear what's going on tonight, that Susan just picked up the library I warrant, the library which was done yeah. after. So that was hanging outside. Normally would be part of the main one. Okay. The main one is to the right side of Susan's yeah. microphone without all the paperwork. Right. Right. So we normally you have that one compiler. <coughs> normally this is what we one get. over here that has a big clip on it is the uh, month that I came in. Okay. warrants that include some of the April 15th plus the newer ones. So you can actually look at that pile there. Yep. Okay. Second Things not dated April we'll send, 15th. We'll right. send library Technology. stuff down that we were. Yep. Yeah, Technology. that's right. Actually, what's this? Oh, I can't read it. <laughs> the advantage of this day, you don't have to write anything down, you just pull the paper out you want to ask questions, Bill. Yeah. I still got it on my phone, yeah. too. Right? Yeah, I still got it on my phone. There we go. Yeah, but you guys flip down through it all. All I got to put go. separate papers to the side. And... No, I 
I think it's, it's, it's going to be really helpful. <laughs> Let me keep all the traffic in order here. It's nice to have it light out, isn't it? Oh, it makes yeah. such a oh, difference. Oh, boy. Oh, it makes such a difference. Although I tried to mow something, I buried my mower. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I don't know how farmers are going to get in their fields this year. I can't, I mean. Well, so last year down there, it's all water. Yeah. Yeah. Well, generally, they start haying right around the 1st of June. So. Oh, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. I'm going to mow the rest of my lawn. Man. <laughs> I decided not to mow my lawn. Yeah. I, 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 I bet you did. <clears throat> well, you know what all the rain you had on my lawn? Apple tree? Is it? No. Oh, no, I, I couldn't walk on my lawn. Really? Just, really? Oh. Uh, no. I had to, I had to put the thing half throttle. I got, I got caught in that rain. That's your point. You got a clay base. Yeah, no, boy, it was. It'll get harder than a rock. Yeah, but you walk on it just like a sponge. Right now, it's machine. Yeah. Has it been like that before? Just I never rock. had it so rough. I can't believe it all that rain. I don't get out. We're going to get that hole. Because I'm all gravel get too. I'm working the town right away. <laughs> Roger, leave this one. Catch all the sand. Okay. That one's done. Okay. Whoops. That one's done. Oh, wait a minute. Let's catch all the sand. Second here. Oh, I blink one here. Okay. Catch all the sand and stone it. When you ditch it, stone it and catch all the sand. Yeah. There you go. Okay. All right, let's see here we go. Okay. This stone end's gonna be there. Expensive job for it's done. Not only expensive. By the time you get done doing the whole thing, you're going to start right back over. Oh, yeah. you got to figure out what you're going to shift that in. I need to go have other Roger. <laughs> other Roger. I'm trying to get the field day moves. I'm all about Saturday. Boy, oh, that was good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the boy don't love very nice. Been writing in a couple of weeks. Let's see. One other that we all need to sign that I added is the confirmation of municipal appointment to the Lamoille County Planning Commission Board of Directors and the Transportation Advisory Committee. And this is one of these things that we all need to sign. And Greg Paws is the uh, is the Planning Commission person, and Roger is the the, um, it's the TAC, I can do it, the Transportation Advisory Committee with Ron as his alternate. So I guess we need to 
move. Do we need to vote it too? Yeah. Yeah. Both, yeah. Both we need to vote it and then sign it. So I need a motion to appoint those folks to. Appoint us to, to sign that. Yeah. What is it? So we, the, the municipal <coughs> appointments to the Lamoille County Planning Commission and the Transportation Advisory Committee. So much to move. Okay. Thank you. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? <clears throat> okay. But we all get to sign it. Okay. Now yeah, that one done. <laughs> Signing away your property. <laughs> The problem is now we can move the paper faster so we can really get confused at what we're signing. Can you rubber stamp? Ah, there we go, right. Probably can. I'm sure you, sure that's, you know, you get all these. <clears throat> yeah, I do, I, doing it this way is interesting because it's easy if you have a question to be able to call Ron on, you know, during the day mm -hmm. and say, what is this? Or Allie can tell you what it is or something. And say, oh, okay, I mean, like that. oh, yeah. No, it's, it's just, this is a good idea. Yeah, well, that's why you're taking us out to dinner. <laughs> that's why we put it in your account, so you take us out. <laughs> Send that big package in so I haven't signed it. Oh, I got it. I'm sure. Okay. And uh, we'll get that one goes Not down to round two. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Then I think, Ron, are we ready for executive session? Uh, one quick reminder. One quick, right? Uh, handed out earlier. Oh, yeah. It's a reminder for June the seven site visits at a bunch of roads. Yep. So yep. That's a Thursday, at three o'clock. Okay. Meet right here. We'll caravan around and meet with whoever shows up at each road. Two o'clock. There's five roads. <coughs> so Webster Road and a couple. <laughs> Webster Road by the most contentious. The rest of our class four roads <coughs> that need to be cleaned up because they're they're not serving any purpose and they create some MRGP responsibility. So you're gonna meet right here. Start here and we'll come up with a plan of attack. Yeah. Eight o'clock. Three p.m. Yeah. What time? Three. three. Oh, three. On the what was it? May. I guess. June seventh. June seventh. Well, On the third. Okay, June seventh is a Friday. I've got June sixth on my thing. Right. June seventh, Friday. What's on your notice? Just you the, notice the, notice. Uh, okay. the notice is the most important. The notice is the most important. Okay. What is the notice? Notice says June there. Thursday, oh, yeah. June seventh. Yeah. Yeah. Thursday, June 7th. Yeah. Well, Thursday <laughs> is June sixth. <6th. laughs> That's not good. <laughs> so it's a six. What did you guys want to do? Six? Yeah. Well, we six. That's what we had Thursday. Yeah, so it's going to be the six. The six yeah. at three. Okay. Yeah. Right. We'll, we'll administer it. Okay. We'll that out. Okay. Okay. <laughs> six. If that's all that's wrong. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> boy. May that, may that be the only thing that's wrong. In the worst wrong. case, we may have to do some new going this or something. Yeah. Okay. This was the first round, don't forget. We're, we that's right. This is right. We haven't done it for a while, but. Right, okay. There's probably another dozen roads in the same kind of debate. These are the ones that kind of rose to the top. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I talked to that. Okay. Mike, is it uh, out there on Webster Road? Johnson, yeah. Probably on the phone for 45 minutes or not. <laughs> nice guy. He, he's not complaining about the town or he just upset and he's trying to trail us in the wintertime go down in there and they get hung up the last time it took 10 hours to get it out on the on the web server yeah i tracked the going up there for gps oh boy. to oh. get over to yeah. get to the yeah oh uh, yeah okay they did the same thing happens up in albany they come back to eden 
Yeah. The GPS. That's right. Then, if it yeah. does that, does it make that sense to spend the money up for the town to spend they the money up there last, to tell them that your GPS last winter. is wrong? Did they? Does it yeah, want to get a record in there and everything? <laughs> Stuck on a I love it in there four, five, six hours. <laughs> okay, so I think if we want to just say we'll go, we want to go to executive session. Yeah. Just I'll check okay, out one minute before. Okay. Yep. Uh, for Sue and Roger Barry, uh, that fire meeting we had the other night. Oh, we can probably do that in executive session. <laughs> you <wanna>? okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think we have a little personnel things there. I tried to. Motion to move into executive session. Okay, then we'll let this get shut okay. down and.